This is my Raspberry Pi tablet. Um, it's got a Bluetooth dongle inside. It's only a Raspberry Pi 2B, I think it is. Uh, if I switch it on, I'm going to use it to use my OBD software. I've got a Bluetooth OBD connector connected into my um, ECU. So I'll, start, I'll just boot up into uh, Raspbian. Okay, so you've got the graphic interface for Raspbian. And I've got uh, my software over here, which I can start up. But the Bluetooth adapter over here, uh, until that connects, it automatically connects. But until it connects, I can't actually connect, open up my uh, Bluetooth. Um, oh, sorry, I can't open up my ODB software, OBD software. Uh, so I have to just wait for that to connect. Uh, meanwhile, but there's one one thing that I have to do though as well is you have to run a, a COM port driver for the OB, OBD serial port. Um, so get the on-screen keyboard up. I'll just get ready to run that as soon as it's uh, connected the. Uh, So that's the command line I need as soon as it connects. It may take a little while, so I'll uh, I may have to cut a bit of this video out just while it connects. As soon as that's connected, I'll uh, I'll show it. So it's okay. It's connected now, uh, and I can see the OBD2 device. So it's got a cross in it because it doesn't know how to drive it, but that's okay because this um, RF com command will drive the ABD software so I just hit enter on that okay so that's now the drivers in place so if I just start my in fact I'll close the keyboard start my uh, software be bad at doing it double clicks okay so my software uh, it just uh, uses the uh, the Bluetooth Connector just as a, a same as a USB connector, it just creates a serial port which it connects on. So my software has now got icons on it and it, it flashes whilst it's waiting to connect. And there, there's the Elm, the Elm, the Elm information on the first tab. I'll go through each of these tabs and, and just show them. Uh, then vehicle information on the next one, so it gets back the vehicle information. Trouble code information on the next one, so it shows you all the trouble code. Uh, and then you can reload the trouble code with this refresh button. Or you can reset trouble code data there and it will ask you to confirm or not uh, so if i confirm and then it resets the trouble code but they all come back because uh, the ecu hasn't got certain things connected to it uh, the plot stuff hasn't been implemented yet so it'll tell you it's not implemented same with free frame data uh, then a frame of data it comes back with all the data for the, for the frame of data then uh, meters and you can add a meter uh, and I, you can drag it across the screen and if you hit that you can select f f which thing you want to uh, actually show so engine coolant temperature on that one and you can add another one you can change the style so this one's a vertical bar uh, or a horizontal bar and if I select data for that if I select um, something else which I can uh, actually show engine coolant temperature so I'll drag that one across there uh, add another one. I'm going to do a vertical bar uh, and uh, for this one, air intake temperature. I'll do. And then, once you've arranged them how you want to arrange them on display, hit the lock button and that gets rid of all the buttons for the configuration and you can just see the display as it is. Uh, but if you unlock, then you can do things like remove them by hitting across and lock again. And the mill light flashes whilst there's when it detects that there's. Um, Trouble codes, and you can get back to the trouble codes of display just by clicking on that or back to the meters display. Uh, PDF and printer are later things which will come later down the line, but so far that's that's uh, doing reasonably well. So I've got the graphics up, there's still a lot to do. I've still got some a lot of um, testing and stuff to do. This is what's in the case I've got two 18650 batteries, and uh, don't believe the 4000 milliamp hour because I was ripped off on these, or I should have known better. Um, 
I've got a boost converter which is in the seat inside the heat shield shield and um, I've got a, uh, a charger as well here a, a um, lithium ion charger um, and then I've got the Raspberry Pi Bluetooth and Wi-Fi dongles uh, and touch screen for the Raspberry Pi just just a standard Raspberry Pi touch screen um, and I've extended the GPIO out on the end and also got a 5 volt connector on the end as well and that's all that's inside um, because it doesn't have to be any more complex, complex than that it's pretty much standard Raspberry Pi stuff but with a boost converter and uh, a charge charger so the new things I've added in the software this time uh, a class called select to allow the user to select um, items so for example uh, they select the, which PID they want to display in, the, in a particular meter. Uh, confirm to allow the user to confirm whether or not they want to do things like confirm exiting the application or confirm clearing the trouble codes. And config, I haven't put any code in there yet, but that will be a configuration dialog where things like serial port can be selected to make it easier to configure. Um, but apart from that, everything's very similar. Um, I've added a, a bunch of stuff to the display. Um, uh, display type stuff. Uh, so there's uh, a list of um, which gadgets are on top of which gadgets so that they can be moved around um, so that the gadget can't get dis um, hidden behind another gadget uh, so that um, a gadget can be brought to the top when it's clicked on uh, and sort of basic things like that, icons, graphics and things like that uh, but mainly uh, it's the selection uh, of things and the um, and additional gadget stuff 